Hey everybody and welcome. Cindy Daychuk here with Queen Bee Creations. Thanks for joining me today on the channel. If you like what you see, you like seeing upcycled projects, new crafts, definitely furniture makeovers, I'd love it if you continue with me on this journey. Hit subscribe. We come at you about twice a week with different ideas and different projects. Today we're going to be making over this little cutie. Now, I have already washed it all down, so it's ready to go. But before we start painting, um, we have to fix these edges. This one is kind of all gnawed off. The woman that owned it, her dog, <laughs> ate the corners. This one in particular. Now, you could opt to just sand it all down and just say, heck, you know, that's life and not worry about it. There is enough of this edge gone, in fact, it it's gone, gone, that I'm going to try and build it up again. To do that, I can't just use wood filler because they're the corners. They're going to take some, some dings and banks. So I need to use a bit of a stronger product. So for that, I'm going to be mixing up some Bondo. Ugh, let me get in a position that's going to work for me. So Bondo is a two-part product. Now, I'm going to sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I've never used Bondo before. I have been wanting to give it a try, and this is the best time to do it because um, it's, it's pretty damaged. And usually a lot of my things maybe have little cracks or that sort of thing, but I want to try Bondo because maybe I could be using it a little bit more. So the first thing that I want to do is just put a little bit of tape just to save um, the surface below it and just because it will save a little bit of my sanding. So I'm going to put this up, I'm going to put this up and wrap it around. Okay, just so that that edge is protected a little bit. This is the surface that I want to build up. Now, I think that I'm going to have to do a couple of layers of this to allow it to build up. Luckily, Bondo dries very quickly. I think that it's sandable with about 16 to 18 minutes. But you also have to work really fast. So it also suggests mix up a little at a time and then keep adding it. So rather than mix up a bunch and have it already hardened and it's just not on your piece, Makes sense, do a little bit as, as you go. Because I'm gonna be creating a lip, I thought as well when I'm applying it, it would maybe be a good idea to have a bit of a surface. So I took a piece of wood and I wrapped it in plastic wrap because I don't know how sticky this stuff is. So I thought maybe that would help me be able to build up a bit of a lip and a surface without it globbing things and having to sand forever once it's dry. In my head, these are all logical steps. We'll see how that goes. Sometimes my logic isn't quite on the mark, so who knows? Okay, so the Bondo comes in a can like this and with a lid like this, and there is this tube inside the lid. Maybe they give you this to mix it up in, but I'm going to mix it up on a board, right? So what they, what they suggest, is you gotta open the can and it's a little bit stinky. Ooh, you have to open up the can and I might as well take stuff off the lid. And they say take about a three inch ball disc. They say three inch disc, but look at this is gloppy. That that's not disc like to me. That's not very descriptive. So three inch kind of disky thing. And then, let me just cover that over. Take this cream hardener and you're gonna squirt out like a little three inch bit of that on there. And then you're gonna work these together for about two minutes and then you only have about four or five minutes to use it before
before it starts to really set up. So we're mixing all of this together, and this is why I just thought, because it's kind of gloppy, that would be better doing this on a board. And they suggest like a non-porous surface, obviously, because if it's porous, you're just going to be pushing it down into getting it all absorbed. And I don't know how to tell when it's all mixed. I think I like those products that have two different things that they change color when they're mixed properly. And for newbies, maybe there's a special Bondo that does that. Bondo for beginners. That would be nice. I think maybe I should be able to tell because it starts to get thicker. So it's not quite as gloppy and would maybe stay put. I think that would be a positive sign. Okay. I think that I've got this mixed up properly because you can see that it's a lot thicker than it was. It's definitely staying in place. So I need to start getting some of this on and building up this corner. All right, so I'm on my second batch um, because the first batch all of a sudden just went hard. It just started to look like it was thickening and it was soft enough. So I am in the apply it when it's gloppy <laughs> stage because it went from oh it's just starting to thicken this is maybe a good texture to oh my god it's already hard and I can't even apply it so I'm in the don't wait two minutes camp because I waited two minutes and that was too long so I want it to start to thicken once it's on here so I can maybe move it a little bit a little bit too smooth, I mean too soft, but I'm thinking I'd rather be working it on the piece because it decides to all of a sudden thicken on me than become so thick that I can't even move it. And I do think my little board is a help. Okay. I'm going to let that set up now and then see about adding more in as I need to because that's really thick and hard now. So I'll give it a couple of minutes. I'll make up, mix up some more and build it up a little bit. Maybe do a little tinch on that corner and then see what we've got. It thickens fast. Bondo is dry, it's like rock hard, so it is now time to sand. And to make my life easier, I am gonna use the palm sander. And really what I, what I wanna do is just definitely get it all smoothed down, all nice and even and level. And then, then we can get the base coat on. <laughs> It's been sanded as much as I'm really gonna sand it, and it's better. It's not perfect, but this piece has all kinds of other dents and dings too. But it doesn't have the dog chew marks in it anymore. On either side, it's a little more rounded looking. It's gonna look better. Now the plan for this piece, I am looking at base coating it in the DIY clay base paint. And then I am looking to do coats of um, In a Pickle, which is a Sweet Pickens milk paint without bond. So I expect without bond that this will then chip and crackle and it will expose the base color. And I'm gonna do a contrasting color. I'm gonna kind of hand mix it. So 
I have cowgirl coral, and that's gonna be the main color that I'm gonna use. Right? So, I'm gonna use cowgirl coral. All of these colors have a little bit of, are kind of thick and, and bottom of the barrel. I'm gonna use, ah, let me get a bit of water. I gotta loosen up a couple of those colors. I didn't get a lot of water. I just got a bit of water. But these have kind of been sitting in these jars for quite a long time. <laughs> so they're a little bit um, thick. Do you know why paint is thick at the best of times? But you know, when it starts to evaporate down in, there we go. That's still pretty, pretty thick. That'll do. Let's put that one off to the side. Let's do the same thing. There is just like this is cake batter, which is kind of a kind of a pale, buttery yellow, and it's really thick down there. I would I would be hard pressed to get it out. So let's just loosen that up a little bit. Um, I've never mixed these colors together before, so I have no idea what they're going to look like. But that's the fun of it. Okay, put that down over there. And I need to do the same. I've got some crinoline in this one. And it too has thickened up a lot. So we're gonna pour that in there. Because this isn't a final coat, I'm not as concerned about, oh my gosh, am I mixing up enough paint? So we've got all three colors in there. Let's stir them up. Okay, because we had mostly the cowgirl coral, we've definitely stayed in the coral family. And so we're gonna have, okay, so it's not drinking. We're gonna have coral and green. I don't know what it's gonna look like. We'll see. So all those of you that are afraid of, of colors and stuff, you know, Let's see how it goes. So, I am just going to get this base coat of coral down. Because this is the clay-based paint, know that it's gonna dry lighter than it's going on, and any of the parts of it that show once we have our milk paint on and any chipping that it does or distressing that I do. So any of this that shows, um, will actually be uh, darker once it is sealed. So we're going to paint this out. Paint this all out in that coral. It's still a pretty color. And then um, I'm going to let it dry overnight. Just again, because I, I, I at least want some of the milk paint to adhere. I don't want all of it to chip off. So I want this to be nice and dry before I applied the milk paint, because if it still had a lot of moisture in, it was dried to the touch, but still hadn't dried fully, then the milk paint is gonna be even more prone to chip. So I'd like um, some chip, chipping, even a, a bunch of chipping, but I don't want it all to chip. And if I get too much chipping, I may layer on another color. I don't know, we'll see together. So I'm gonna carry on with getting this painted and uh, letting it dry overnight, and then, then I'll be back at you. This baby has had overnight to dry, and I really wanted it to have that time so that this paint didn't impact the milk paint. But it is now time for us to mix up our milk paint. And I like to mix this up, uh, I like to mix this up and then let it have maybe 15, 20 minutes um, to kind of sit and thicken up a little bit. It lets the milk solids kind of absorb into the water. 
I also like it to, to add the powder to water, and in particular, warm water. So I'm just adding a little bit here. And generally you wanna do maybe one to one ratio. I'm gonna mix up the entire sample pack because I'm gonna need it all. And possibly another one. We'll see if I need more. But I'd like to get at least two coats on. So I'm just mixing it in and you have the opportunity to determine with how much water you add, how thick or how thin you want your paint. So if you just want a really thin wash, look at the color of that green that's going over top of it. This is, this is a Sweet Pickens Milk paint and it is in a pickle. So it's kind of a pickle green. And look at the contrast that we're gonna have, right? Between the two. Okay. So I'm definitely going to want to have two coats on this and just to get coverage over that coral. All right, so that's kind of mixed in. I just want to let that sit and let those milk solids kind of mix together. And then we are going to come back and start putting the color on here. I'm so excited to get the color on this. It's going to be gorgeous. All right, see you soon. I have finally gotten back to this project. I was away a little bit longer than I anticipated, working on other things. Um, but you can see that our paint has thickened up a lot. Um, and, and again, you know, you, you get to determine the texture of your paint. But what's left for us to do is get two coats of this paint onto my dresser. So we're just going to apply that green. Look how nice of a green that is. We're gonna apply that green over top of kind of our corally color. And because I used DIY on the base, I do need to be a little bit careful when I'm applying a paint like this that has a fairly high water content on it, only because I can, I can be reactivating the DIY paint. So I'm just using light brush strokes to ensure that I'm okay. And we're just getting green on there. So I'm going to apply two coats, let it sit overnight, and then I'll come back at you and we'll see what we've got. Now if you recall when I mixed this milk paint I did not add anything except for water so I did not add any extra bond. An extra bond is the additive that you put into your milk paint to help either minimize or eliminate potential chipping. So I didn't do that, which means potentially we could get chipping. But milk paint has a bit of a mind of its own. So sometimes you are hoping for chipping like I am this time and it goes, nah, <laughs> and it just really loved your base surface and it stuck on really well and you get nothing. Other times you decide you're gonna add extra bond, you don't want any chipping, and it goes woohoo, <laughs> you get tons of chipping. So if you like to be totally in control of exactly how your finish is gonna turn out, you are probably not meant for milk paint because it is going to do a little bit of its own thing. But, fingers crossed, Fingers crossed we'll get some chipping. If we don't, then I'll force some chipping. And uh, you get to see how that goes. Anyway, stay tuned for tomorrow. All right, this has had overnight to dry. And I'm not getting a lot of chipping. I don't know what it is with me with milk paint. It doesn't like chipping for me. I have some happening up here. 
So right in around here, along the edge up here, that will be very noticeable when I go to sand those chips off. But not in a lot of other places. So I figure this is a good time for us to practice and play and see if we can force some chipping. I haven't done it before, but I've seen it done. So what I have is I have my, my old green paintbrush from yesterday that I just dropped into a container of water because why clean it if you're just going to be getting it wet again. Um, so it's a little bit wet. And so I'm just going to add a bit of water to the edge and then take a heat gun to dry it. Okay, I actually got a little bit of chipping happening down along there. Can you see? So that's my plan is, I guess that's a little baby amount, is I'm just going to start, start doing that. I'm going to do that everywhere that I kind of like a bit of chipping and see if I get some. I'm going to try. I mean, you know, what the heck? So it liked chipping there. I'd like a little in that corner, so I'm going to try the corner again. So I'm just going to carry on. did get some chipping in some spots that I didn't have any before and once I start sanding you'll be able to see more of it happening because there's nice small cracks so for this I'm not using my big sander or even my little <laughs> electric sander I'm gonna do it by hand just because I want to be um, a little bit I don't want to take everything right down to nothing so I have a 320 grit sandpaper. I've just wrapped it around a block and I am just going to go over gently. I don't want to um, overdo the distressing, but I do want to smooth out all of the wood and I definitely want to expose some of that chipping. I mean, look at some of those flakes coming off on the side there. That's going to be lovely. So I'm going to sand the whole piece down, um, do the distressing that I need to get all the loose little flakes off of it, wipe it down with a cloth, and then we'll come back for doing some of the sealing. And I got to look into um, the hardware on this. A lot of it was bent and broken. So I have to check my stash and see what hardware I still have. This... Um, it had to stay because it, it couldn't come off. <laughs> Hence the, it's now green. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna carry on with some of the sanding through the reveal, which is really the fun part. We're getting cool um, corals peeking out of all of this. So I'm a little excited. It will show up better once it's sealed as well. Um, but let me carry on with this part and then I'll be back at you. Okay, this piece is all sanded and ready to seal. Now, with that technique of wetting and then using the heat gun, just make sure that you keep the heat gun moving. You don't want to burn your paint, and that is a possibility. So you want to keep it moving so that you don't overheat one particular area. And I did get some chipping happening, which I love because there's no way to make a to, to get that look with sanding it just it has to has to only happen through chipping and really milk paint is that's that's what it does so it's the best way to be able to get that look to seal this piece um, know that as you add more moisture to it you have the potential of chipping again so I don't tend to like sealing milk paint with something really wet, like a poly, 
You could use an oil wax, which I have in the shop in the Sweet Pickens line. And with this, either the clear or possibly the white oil wax would look good because it'd sit down in all those crevices. You could use beeswax from the Sweet Pickens line as well. I'm just using the clear wax from DIY because it's open. So I just want to let you know, I mean, it's because it's open and, and I don't need to have two waxes on the go at the same time. And really the decision was no more than that. But I just wanted to show you how you're going to get those colors coming back. You can see that deepen up and the, the wax is going to make those colors so much richer and fuller. So you could use a, a wax brush, you could use a chip brush, um, you could use a rag, right? So you could just take your hand and wipe that in and rub that down. Look how beautiful that is. I'm gonna take some close-ups for you guys when this is done because that coral popping out from underneath that um, in a pickle green is beauty. I love that. So, you know, sometimes you always think, oh, that's going to be too much of a contrast. But bear in mind that you're, you're only seeing a little bit of that color happening, right? So I'm going to continue. And for this piece, I'm, I'm probably just going to be using my rag for this because I do want to get it down into the crevices. I'll use my chip brush a little bit to get down into some of those. But, um, oh, guys, you're going to love the, the look of this coral with the green. So I'll come back when this is when this is all waxed up and beautiful looking in the drawers are back. our little dresser finished. You can see from some of the close-ups how that that cowgirl coral just kind of pops through, makes it a little bit more interesting. It's more than just a straight green piece. Where we got the chipping, we're down to some of the natural wood. You've got some, some of the coral popping through and then the green so it looks like layers upon layers of paint and aging. Super cute. I love this little guy now. Updated it with some pulls, some black pulls, the old um, ones I still have because I may find a piece that they suit that I don't need for, I think I could do, I, I definitely can't do five because one was broken. Maybe I might be able to squeak out four, definitely if I just need two. Um, so I always hang on to the old pulls just in case. I did have some old gold ones um, that I had enough to fit on here, but they were just a little too big looking. And I quite like the contrast with the black on this. I think it just perks it right up and kind of gives it a little bit, um, a little bit more something. So I love the, I love the way that the milk paint combined with the DIY paint. So using the DIY underneath just makes my life just so much easier. Milk paint over milk paint tends to chip a lot more. I got a nice amount of chipping. I had to force some with the heat gun, but again, another another little tip and another little tool in your, your kit bag there so that if you're looking for some chipping and not getting it, you can force some of that. Some other paints will also do that, so you could play with some of those, but I gotta tell you, um, I didn't like this piece at all that it sat in the back of my, my shop here for a while until I thought, oh, it's the perfect size to be able to play with, to, to, to experiment with layering the two paint lines that I carry in the shop. And um, I love it now. So that's the power of paint and of transforming some of these things. Certainly as well, playing with some of the Bondo, that worked out great. We've got some nice curved edges. Don't look perfect but that's okay because nothing on this looks perfect it looks its age 
but they're nice and strong, they're nice and sturdy, they painted well, you really can't tell that a dog chewed them off, which again, helps me be able to save and rescue some of these pieces. Let me know what you think, guys. Check out queenbeecreationshome.com for any of the paint and supplies that I used. Um, love to hear from you as always. I'm in love with it. Tell me what you think. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. And until then, take care.